Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a Death Guard Blight Drone from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming. Please check the description box down below, you'll find a direct link to their web store. And this link really helps my YouTube channel, so anytime you purchase anything from Goblin Gaming, please use the link in the description box and help support my channel. In this video we're going to be painting the Blight Drone in a relatively fast manner. The reason for the speed is because a lot of hobbyists out there have just got hold of the starter set and they've got a lot of Death Guard miniatures to get through. So hopefully by watching this tutorial you'll find a way of painting all of your Death Guard minis in a similar fashion to make them look really really nice on the tabletop but not spend too long having to paint them. I painted the Blight Drone in about two hours, so that's really quick for me. But as you can see, it's still a fairly tidy paint job. So I'm hoping by the end of this video, you'll be able to recreate and paint your Blight Drone in exactly the same way in a very fast speed. So uh, guys, as always with these videos, they are rather lengthy. So go grab yourselves a nice hot drink and maybe a nice ice cold beer and we'll get started. After building the Blight Drone, it's time to start priming. I'm using Alclad 2's Lacquer Primer. This is an absolutely fantastic primer and goes down super thin and smooth onto the surface. And because it's a lacquer primer, it's really tough and hard wearing on the miniature. You do have to be aware though guys, because it's a lacquer primer, that the fumes are very harmful. So please use a spray booth and wear a mask and make sure that you're knifed and safe. For those without an airbrush, you can still prime using rattle can primers from Games Workshop. You can use their uh, white primer. It's important to use a white primer in this instance because we're actually going to be using a light base coat. If we primed in black, it would alter the color of the base coat being such a light color. So it's much more beneficial to prime in white with this color scheme. Also, I'm priming at about 20 psi here, guys. I'm also changing the angle of the miniature to make sure that all areas of the miniature has some uh, primer on it. Now it's time to base coat the miniature, I'm going to be using Games Workshop's Death Guard Green which is a brand new base colour from them. I'm actually using it in the airbrush and as you can see I've thinned it down with just water and it should be of a milky consistency by the time you've thinned it with some water. And as you can see this is a sort of consistency we're looking for once thinned. As you can see, the paint's spraying absolutely beautifully out of the airbrush, just thinning it with water. I'm giving it a light coat and I'm making sure it goes on nice and thin and smooth. I'm going to be painting the whole of the miniature in this colour and making sure that all areas of the miniature are covered with the Death Guard colour. Again, I'm base coating here at 20 psi. Again guys, it's important to physically change the angle of the miniature so you make sure that you get the paint on all areas of the miniature. Thank you. 
Now we're going to shade the Death Guard green colour using Games Workshop's Athonian Camo Shade. Now this is a wash and you may not have seen people airbrush it before but you're perfectly uh, able to airbrush it and it goes on absolutely beautifully. It's very very thin so you have to pull back on the trigger very gently and let the colour build up slowly. You don't want the wash pooling all over the miniature because it will leave stains. So the reason that we're going to airbrush it as opposed to brush it on is that it will go on a lot smoother and it will also uh, make sure that there's less pooling of the actual wash. After allowing the Athonian camo shade to dry, this is what the miniature looks like. Now we're going to come back in with some Death Guard Green with Citadel's large dry brush. Now it's really important to use the correct type of brush for dry brushing guys and I highly recommend Games Workshop's dry brushes. They're absolutely brilliant. This dry brush I've owned for about four or five years and it still works absolutely great. Um, some of their brushes are not too, too good and it's much better to use Windsor & Newton Series 7s but their dry brushes are absolutely fantastic and I highly recommend them. I find the best way to dry brush is to remove most of the paint onto some uh, kitchen roll or some tissue paper and when I'm dry brushing I actually just feather the bristles over the miniature so I'm not scrubbing at it I'm just lightly brushing over the details of the miniatures that will just catch the extreme edges of all the panels if you actually scrub at the miniature it will leave a uh, texture on the areas of the miniature that you don't want so take your time brush gently and build up the dry brushing slowly. Now we're going to be using Games Workshop's Edge Highlight Krieg Khaki and it's important that we actually use a lighter colour now to really make those panels pop. So again just dry brushing but as you can see the technique is very loose with the brush in the hand and also making sure that I don't scrub at the miniature.
now we're going to base coat all of the flesh on the blow drone. I'm going to be using Games Workshop's Rakarth flesh. And I'll place it on the palette like so using a brush and also add a little water to the mix. You can use Games Workshop's Lamia Medium instead of water here. You'll notice I'm using a fairly large brush here. What I do is I block in most of the flesh on the open panels and as it gets to the more delicate areas, I switch over to a smaller brush to make sure that I don't get any of the Rakar flesh on the nice um, armor panels that we've actually painted previously. It's also worth noting guys that I actually build up this Rackard flesh colour in two layers. Um, the reason for this is that we don't want to paint in one thick layer and obscure any of that lovely detail and leave brush stroke behind. So you're better off thinning it with a little water and painting in two thin layers. Now we're going to be painting some of the metallic parts on the bloat drone using Vallejo Game Air Chainmail Silver. I absolutely love this colour guys, it absolutely uh, goes on so smooth and almost in one coat coverage and you don't need to dilute it as it's really thin straight out of the bottle. Now we're going to be using some of Games Workshop's technical play, Blood for the Blood God. It's important to thin this down as it's quite thick and gloopy and it's very hard to control. So if you thin it down with a little water, you can actually have more control over it. Also it's really important to shake all your paints, but even more so I'd say with Blood for the Blood God. So here you can see I'm just thinning it down with a little bit of water. and. On the cracks on the green armor, we're just going to place some of that blood for the blood guard to make those um, look really sore and bloody.
Here I'm using Games Workshop's Balthazar Gold, which is a bit of a silly name for it because it's more of a bronze colour to be quite honest guys. But anyway, um, I'm placing it down, I've thinned it with a little water and I'll go over it in two uh, thin layers as um, we did with the Rackard flesh just to make sure we've got a nice solid uh, smooth coverage. And here you can see what our bloke drone looks like with the base colours of the Balthazar Gold, Chainmail Silver and the Rakar Flesh painted on the blow drone. Now I'm going to be painting all the bone areas on the blow drone using Games Workshop's Zandri Dust. Now we're going to wash all the flesh with Games Workshop's Druchy Violet. Here I'm painting straight from the pot and it's going to leave some staining behind because it's quite a strong shade this colour. I'm going to actually come in with the airbrush and smooth out some of the staining. But if you don't have an airbrush I highly recommend you dilute uh, some of the wash with some water. When placing a wash over a base coat, it's important to make sure that the wash doesn't pour too much. What I mean by this is gravity will naturally pull the wash down on the miniature and it will pull towards the bottom of details. If you leave this, it can re leave sorry, really uneven and patchy looking uh, paintwork. So make sure you watch as it dries and any pooling that you see on the bottom of the miniature or round details that you don't want that you actually just mop up that excess wash.
As I mentioned a moment ago, I'm coming back at him with Rakar flesh that I've thinned down in the airbrush with some water. I'm just slightly feathering in the Rakar flesh on the extreme surfaces of all of that bloated uh, drone's flesh. So on all the tops of the uh, rolls of flesh and leaving the Drucci Viola in all the nooks and crannies and all the recesses of the miniature. I also want to add guys, sometimes I forget to say what airbrush I'm using, but in this video I'm using from start to finish an Awata Eclipse CS airbrush. This airbrush is absolutely fantastic at general purposes, so your varnishing, your priming, your base coating, but as you can see here, it can also do fine detail work as well. So it's a great all round airbrush. Now it's time to add some highlights. I'm using Games Workshop's layer paint Pallid Witch Flesh here, and I'm using their medium dry brush. And again, just feathering over the flesh, just to highlight uh, all of the flesh with the Pallid Witch Flesh. Here I'm adding Blood for the Blood God on all of the cuts and all of the boils on the flesh of the blow drone. Now this is really simple, simple and quick to do guys and it saves a lot of time by adding uh, many of the colours to the flesh. Uh, you could have painted the boils in a really nice uh, yellow colour and added maybe some Nurgle's rot. But using the blood for the blood guard still looks great and is really quick and simple to use. Here I'm using Seraphine Sepia to go over all of the cracks in the armour just to make the armour look a little um, dirtier and grubbier. I'm also streaking from the cracks in the armour just to make it look like rain, water or rust streaks are coming out of it. All of the bone on the blow it drone is painted using seraphim sepia. All of the silver metallics are painted over using Games Workshop's Norn Oil. And I want a really strong effect here so I don't dilute the wash.
Agrax Earthshade is then painted on all of the areas that were painted using Balthazar Gold. There's some lovely detailing on the point work on the blue drone but I've decided to actually paint them using Vallejo Game Air Black so it's actually going to hide a little bit of that detail but for speed um, and when we add some of the earth colour to the base later on and I dry brush the pipes to make them look dirty and grubby um, it will still look nice uh, but if you want to really make those pipes look good, I'd advise you to paint them in a flesh colour like we did earlier. I also paint the lens on the blow drawing using Vallejo Game Air Black. To add another layer of grime and grub to the blow drone, I paint all of the metallics, including the Balthazar Gold, using Games Workshop's Athonian Camo Shade. And this looks really, really cool. Um, and as you actually look at the metallics they have got that sort of dingy look to them that you can only get by adding a, another layer of wash uh, and in this instance it's a green and it works really well for the death guard
Now I'm dry brushing Games Workshop's A Shabti Bone onto all of the bone areas, but I'm making sure that I only do it on the top thirds of all of the uh, bones and leave behind the Zandri dust towards the bottom of all of the bones, which leaves a really cool transitional effect from dark bone colour to light. Vallejo's Game Air Silver is then dry brushed onto all of the metallics including the uh, Balthazar Gold. So all of the metallics get a very light dry brush of silver which is going to make all of those metallics pop. Vallejo Game Air Earth is now airbrushed onto the base at 20 psi. I also airbrush ever so slightly onto the pipes just to give them a dirty grubby feel over the Vallejo Game Air Black that we've already painted. Agrax Earthshade is washed onto the base. Once the wash is dried, I then come back in with Zandri Dust and dry brush all of the base, and I dry brush the bottom thirds of all of the pipes as well. To add a really cool effect to the lens on the blow drone, I'm going to add some gloss varnish. The gloss varnish will really make that lens look different to the rest of it by being so glossy and shiny and will give it a really glass look. The reason I went for black as well on the lens is it looks really sinister. And here we have our finished blow drone. I had absolute great fun painting this blow drone guys and I really love the Death Guards colour scheme and all the putrid pustules and the general uh, blight look of them. I want to say a huge thank you once again to Goblin Gaming who sent me out the Dark Imperium box set. If you'd like to purchase your own Dark Imperium box set, please check the description box down below. There'll be a direct link to their web store and you can go and do that for yourselves. Also want to say a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to help support my YouTube channel on Patreon, please check the link in the description box down below and you can go over to my Patreon page and find out more about the prizes I give away each month and why I'm on Patreon. Uh, lastly guys, um, if you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, hit it as hard as you can and thank you very much for watching the video guys and I'll catch you in the next one.